On behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, welcome to Be Ye Holy Ministries. We're going to be coming out of Proverbs, the first chapter, the first through the fourth verse today, the seventh through the eighth verse, the tenth through the eleventh verse, the twentieth through the 22nd verse, and the 32nd through the 33rd verse. Amen? Our lesson aimed this morning, amen, is to value godly wisdom. Uh-huh. And allow it to have influences in our choices every day. Uh, that means applying biblical principles in our daily lives as believers. Amen? We're going to start out by reading the word of God. We're going to start out with Proverbs, the first chapter, the first verse. In class, if you would, please alternate, amen, or read along with me. I'm going to start with the first verse. And the first verse says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtly to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. To fear correction, the fear of the Lord, is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instructions of thy father. And, and forsake, forsake not, not the, the law, law of thy, thy mother. mother. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come, come ye us, let, let us lay wait, wait for, for blood. blood. Let, let us look privately for the innocent without, without cause. Wisdom crieth out, crieth without. She uttered her voice in the streets. She crieth, she crieth in, in the, the chief place of concourse, concourse in the, the opening of the, the gates. gates. And the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from Fear of evil. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. This is a wonderful lesson this morning. Amen. It's called a hey, the call of, listen, the call of wisdom. Wisdom is calling. Amen. It says the call of wisdom. Amen. Somebody, how can wisdom call you? Amen. I want to start out. Uh, we're going to talk about call to be called. Amen. We're going to talk about call and calling, amen, very briefly um, as we explore the lesson title. We see here a call, called, or calling literally means to give a name or to summon. The term call is used throughout the Bible. It often means to appoint an office or destiny. In the New Testament, it typically refers to the invitation given to men by God to accept salvation in Jesus Christ. Amen? Glory to God. So I'm talking about call, called, and calling. I'm talking about an invitation. Amen? I'm talking about being given a name, and I'm talking about being summoned. Amen? Glory to God. I'm going to reference Acts, the 16th chapter in the 31st verse, and it says, And they said, Believe. That's the invitation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Amen. Romans 10 and 9 says what? If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, my Bible tells me thou shalt be saved. I'm talking about accepting the invitation. Amen. The call. Amen. Genesis, the 32nd chapter in the 28th verse, and it says, and he said, Thy name shall be called. I'm talking about to be given a name. It says, no more Jacob, 
but Israel. For as a prince has thy power with God and with men and has prevailed. Amen. I'm going to go to Ephesians 4 and 11. Ephesians 4 and 11, it tells me, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Amen. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. Some of us have been given a name. Amen. Glory to God. I'm talking about to be given a name, amen? I'm talking about those that have received the invitation, amen? They have been given a name, amen? Glory to God. As we look at the Exodus, the 19th chapter and the 20th verse, amen? We see that it says, Then the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain, and the Lord called, he summoned, amen, Moses to the top of the mountain, and the Bible tells me, it says, and Moses went up, amen. He was obedient, amen, to the call of God, amen. So as an encouraging word, amen, this morning, amen, if, amen, one has acknowledged the calling, amen, I'm talking about the invitation, amen, as I talked about Romans 10 and 9, it says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead. If you've received, amen, that invitation, amen, in your heart, amen, amen, glory to God. God has called, amen, has given you, amen, a new name, amen. He's given some of us the name of evangelist, amen. He's given some of us the name of teacher, amen. Some of us the name of preacher and pastor, amen. He's given us, amen. A new name, amen. Glory to God. Don't be so quick, amen, to renounce the name that God has given you, amen. I'm talking about the apostle, the pastor, the preacher, the teacher, the evangelist, amen, for a worldly rendition, amen, of who you once were, amen. Don't be so quick to renounce it, amen. I know we like our titles, amen. I know we like to be called doctor and lawyer and everything else, but in the house of God, he's given you a new name, amen. Let's not be so quick, amen, to renounce the name that God has given us, amen, for a world of rendi rendition of who we used to be, amen. Continue to exercise wisdom, amen, in the perfection of Jesus Christ, amen. I'm talking about exercising wisdom, amen, in the call, amen. Our lesson title says the call of wisdom. God is calling us to be wise, amen. Glory to God in him. But then someone might say, what is wisdom, amen? Wisdom simply is the ability to discern, amen, the inner qualities and relationships, amen, a wise attitude, amen, but a belief, a course of action, amen. The teachings of the ancient wise men, it says, those that love the Lord, amen, glory to God. The quality or state of being, amen, knowledge of what is true, amen, or right, amen. There is a difference, amen, between biblical wisdom, amen, and worldly wisdom, glory to God. As we go into this lesson, I wanna talk a little bit about biblical wisdom, amen, because see, it's, wonderful, it's a wonderful thing, amen, when we're all on the same sheet of music, amen, when we understand the call, amen, and what the call signifies, amen, as it pertains to those who have received the invitation, amen, and been given a new name, glory to God. Biblical wisdom refers to practical skills associated with the understanding and living a successful life in Jesus Christ, amen. Throughout the Bible, we see, you will notice wisdom used in primarily in three different contexts, amen. I'm going to talk about the divine wisdom of God, amen, the divine understanding of God himself. That's beyond man's limited intellect, amen, beyond man's experience, amen, beyond man's knowledge. I'm talking about the divine knowledge of God, amen. First Corinthians, amen, the first chapter and the 25th verse, amen, it says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than that man, amen. We see Paul preached, amen, to the Jews, amen, and the Gentiles in the we call Roman world, amen. He knew that the Jews looked, amen, for miraculous signs, uh -huh, and the Greeks looked for philosoph philosophical wisdom, amen. 
But God bypassed both, amen, glory to God. And he made salvation available, amen, through the resurrection, the crucifixion, amen, of Christ, amen. The message about the crucified Christ, amen, was a stumbling block, amen, to the Jews, whose idea of the Messiah was far different. It was, a, it was foolishness to the Greeks because it seemed contrary to their philosophical system. You know what I mean when sometimes people tell you, that just don't make sense to me, amen. You're right, amen. It's not about uh, worldly wisdom. I'm talking about godly wisdom. I'm talking about divine understanding, amen. Second Timothy, amen, we find that some are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, amen. They go to school for years, amen. They've been around for decades, amen, but never, ever able to come to the knowledge, amen, of the truth, amen. We see here the second way that we see uh, wisdom uh, being used, we see here believers understanding about life, amen, glory to God. We're going to reference 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter and the seventh verse, and it says, for who maketh thee to different from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why doest thou glory as if thou hast not received it? See, a man cannot do nothing on his own. A woman cannot do nothing, amen, on her own, amen. Unless it be given, amen. Unless it comes, amen, from heaven, amen. If it was not for God, amen. We cannot do anything on our own, amen. So why should we glory, amen. John, amen, the third chapter in the 27th verse, it says, John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given from heaven, amen. We need to exercise wisdom, amen. Amen. Glorying man, amen, is not going to get you anywhere. Glorying yourself, amen. Why would anyone rig glory in themselves, amen? Why would anyone regard any man or woman as being superior, amen? Perhaps it's uh, one's own, amen, bias that makes them feel so important, amen. The point of the comment is, we see here, is to encourage humbleness, amen. We can do nothing without the Lord, amen? Does not matter who it is. The third instance that we see primarily used in the Bible when we reference wisdom, we'll see in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter in the third verse, we see Christ's character, amen? It says, but of him mm -hmm, are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God, is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Every true believer, I say every true believer in Christ, uh-huh, he is all that we need, amen. It is the Lord who has done it all, amen. I can do nothing, amen, of myself, amen, and say that I'm a true disciple, amen. I can do nothing of myself, amen, and say that I really love the Lord, amen, glory to God. I can do nothing of myself, amen. No power of mine, amen. I could not save myself, amen. So when we look at this thing and I ask the class, what is wisdom? Amen. What is wisdom? As I said, a believer's inner quality, amen, and ability to discern things of God, amen? A believer's inner quality and ability to discern the things of God, amen? Where does wisdom come from, amen? I want to let you know, I mean, a lot of us, we believe, amen, that wisdom comes from a lot of different places, amen? But I'm here to tell you today, amen, that wisdom comes from God, amen? The book of Proverbs offers, amen, Numerous short, amen, instructions for living a life of wisdom on this earth, amen. Glory to God. But sometimes we get godly wisdom 
confused, amen, with worldly wisdom. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. For example, godly wisdom, when you look at Psalms the 111 and 10, godly wisdom tells us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. It tells me the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh-huh. And a good understanding have all they that do what? His commandments. All those that are obedient. Amen. That means they understand. Amen. Mm -hmm. His praise endureth. Amen. Forever. I want to go on and talk about Proverbs, the second chapter in the sixth verse, where it says, for the Lord giveth wisdom. Uh huh. Out of his mouth cometh what? Knowledge and understanding. Amen. As I began to look at a uh, show earlier on, amen, and I watched and I began to, to listen to the things that were coming out of the mouth of the commentator, and I just listened and wondered how long would he continue to talk about everything except the word of God, amen? Glory to God. He ran it on for about 30 minutes and never mentioned the things of God, amen? But he was more fixated, amen, on the things of the world, amen? Worldly, I call it, proverbs, amen? Y'all know what I'm talking about, those worldly proverbs where, the, where you've heard many folks and you heard me say on many occasions, people will say, follow your heart, baby, mm-hmm. But go to Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, in the ninth verse, amen. Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, in the ninth verse, tells me the heart is deceitful above all things, amen. I want to say that one more time. Follow your heart, baby. Uh -huh. I'm talking about worldly wisdom, worldly proverbs, amen. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Mm -hmm. Who can know it? Acts, the 13th chapter in the 22nd verse says, and when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be king, to whom also he gave their testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after what? My own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. See, there's a distinct difference, amen, between godly wisdom, amen, and that and we call called world of wisdom, amen. It's a difference between a heart that's for God, amen, and your own heart, amen. Because we see here, David taught us a lesson here because we see David denounced his own heart and he began to what? Seek God's heart, amen, above his own. He began to seek God's heart outside of his own will, amen, his own desire. What is God's heart, amen? How many of us have asked that question? Amen. When we look at this lesson, it says the call of wisdom. Amen. And I'm not talking again about worldly wisdom. I'm talking about godly wisdom. See, that was godly wisdom. David did not seek his own desire. He did not seek his own will. He seek, sought out the will of the Father. Amen. Don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We got all these proverbs, all these things that we say, amen. And some of them have what we call some positive connotations behind it, amen. You know what I'm talking about, the ones that says blood is thicker than water, amen. Some of us, you know, say beauty lies in the eye of the beholder, amen. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It says it takes a village to raise a child, uh-huh, two wrongs. Don't make a right just because it sounds like it's right. Amen. I'm, it's the difference between being right and righteous. Amen. See, when right. you leave teach God it, it. out of the equation, we find out that that's just wanting to be right. Amen. I know it sounds like we have a comment. Amen. Our lesson text is about the call of wisdom. It begins in Proverbs. Amen. The first chapter, amen, and the first verse, amen. Amen. Thank God, amen, for Sister Tony, amen, and Brother McDonald. We see here in Proverbs, the first chapter, amen, and the first verse, as we explore this lesson text, amen, it says, the Proverbs of Solomon. 
the son, amen, of David, king of Israel. Now see, now we see a man that has statue, amen. And we see, why we see here the introduction, amen, of the author here of Proverbs is Solomon, the son of David, amen. Amen. First Kings, amen, the third chapter in the fifth through the 14th verse recounts Solomon asking what? God for wisdom, amen. How many of us ask God for wisdom, amen, or do we go off of our own intellect? Do we go off of our own experience? When it is that we're handling the things of God. He said, I go to a prepare a place for you. And whose house is not your house, amen? Say, so how many of us ask for wisdom? See, Solomon understood something. When you go and you read 1 Kings, the fourth chapter, uh-huh, the correction, 1 Kings, the third chapter, the fifth through the 14th verse, you look at the context of the writing, you see that he understood that it was God's people, amen. And he asked God for wisdom on how to deal with his people, amen. That which God had allowed him, amen, had bestowed, amen, what we call, amen, shepherdship, what well, we call oversight, amen, of. Glory to God. I want to make a comment that even uh, Solomon knew that he couldn't get this kind of wisdom from nobody else. With all the wise men, he couldn't get it from nobody that's else. That's right, he couldn't get it. So he knew, the, who, he knew who wisdom was and where, where to get wisdom. And so I was looking at Job 28, uh, and it say, mm -hmm. um, in the 20th verse, it say, whence then come of wisdom? Mm -hmm. And where is the place of understanding? Mm -hmm. Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living mm -hmm. and kept close from the fowls of the air. Destruction and death say, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. But it, it say, God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. For he looked to the ends of the earth and sealed under the whole heaven to make the weight for the winds and the weight for the waters uh, by measure. And then it tells us that, and unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, to, and to depart from evil is understanding. My point is, is that, you know, we can't even get it from the, the fowls of the air. We can watch, you know, the, uh, the, the makings of, of what God has done in the world, and we could obtain wisdom of how things are made and where this come from, but we cannot obtain wisdom unless we get it from God. Amen, amen, glory to God, amen. Wisdom comes from God, amen. Do not be deceived, man. Wisdom comes from nowhere else. Wisdom comes from God. You might have experienced some things, amen, and might have uh, had some takeaways, amen, but we find out that Wisdom, amen, true wisdom, I'm talking about godly wisdom, amen, comes from God, amen, glory to God. We see here Solomon, amen, glory to God. We see here Solomon in his youth, amen. So we see we have no excuse because Solomon in 1 Kings, amen, the fourth chapter, we see that he was presented as the wisest man, amen, on the planet, amen. He was the wisest on the planet. Amen. So we see wisdom is not predicated, amen, on your age, amen. Wisdom, amen, comes from God, amen. It's predicated, amen, on your receiving the call. I'm talking about the invitation, amen. The invitation, amen, to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, amen. And I'm talking about walking in perfection, amen. I'm talking about your calling, amen. Walking in that, amen. Now that you've been summoned, amen, and you've been renamed, amen. I'm talking about walking, amen, in perfection. It says, a child, Solomon acknowledged his calling, the summon, amen, and that he knew nothing, and that he stood in the midst of God's people, not his own. Solomon proceeded to ask God for an understanding, heart to judge his, I'm talking about God's people, uh -huh. And scripture tells me that Solomon's speech pleased the Lord, is what it said. We should all return to just being content with doing God's will, amen. Many love to be exalted, amen, to be seen by men, amen. The scripture says you have your reward, amen. Oh, amen, glory to God. You can reference that in Matthew 
the sixth chapter and the second verse. Because we find out that believers, I'm talking about the saints, those that love the Lord, amen. They seek the approval of God, amen. Uh-huh. Hypocrites, we find Matthew 6, chapter and the fifth verse, they seek the approval and glory of man. Glory to God. The lesson text says the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. We just finished speaking about the character of God, amen, being exemplified through this man, amen. Solomon who chose, amen, to submit himself to God, amen. His will, his desire, his rule, his want. We're going to go on to the second chapter, amen. The second chapter says to know wisdom. Mm hmm and instruction to perceive the words of understanding. We understand when it says to know means to learn, amen, to discern, amen, to perceive, amen, to experience, to confess, to consider, amen, to know wisdom. Uh-huh, the wisdom I'm talking about, I'm talking about the personification of discernment that originates, uh-huh, and is ordained by God, amen. To fear the Lord, amen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Somebody probably going scripture hunting right now and saying he didn't give me a spirit of fear. So there's a different type of fear. I'm talking about a reverence for God, amen. We're going to go to Proverbs the ninth chapter in the 10th verse, amen. Proverbs the ninth chapter in the 10th verse tells me, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh-huh. If you have no fear, you have no wisdom, amen. The Bible tells me the fear of the Lord is the beginning. Uh-huh. It's not the middle. It's not the end. It's the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding, amen. We see here when we look at instruction, glory to God. Instruction, we see discipline by which men are trained, chastised, amen, and we see reproof. I'm talking about instruction. To know wisdom and instruction, amen. I'm talking about to learn, uh-huh. I'm talking about from God, amen. We find out here. I'm paraphrasing here and I'm just breaking it down. To learn from God, discipline, amen. To learn from God, chastisement. To learn from God, reproof, amen. I'm just going to break it down. To learn from God, those things, glory to God. Question, uh, this fear you're talking about, mm -hmm. uh, can you expound that fear? Is that the frightened fear or what kind of fear is this that you're talking about? Yeah, I'm not talking about some fear where it is that you're scared that God, God's going to, do this or do that. I'm talking about a reverence or a respect for God. We find out that kind of fear doesn't come from God. God loves us, amen. A lot of time we take it and we look at it literal. We look at it from a worldly standpoint, but when we look at it and we find out, we go, go ahead and pull that scripture where it says that God did not give us a spirit. See, God is a spirit. We serve a spirit. The Holy Ghost, God and Jesus is one, amen. So I'm talking about <laughs> what is the God in you? I'm talking about the spirit in you. Uh -huh. God didn't give you some other spirit. God gave you his own spirit, amen. And in that spirit, amen, there's no fear, amen. In that spirit, we find out there's covering. In that spirit, there's love. It's when we operate outside of him, amen. Glory to God. Also, I would like to add on to what you said, that mm -hmm. fear also, according to Proverbs 8, and 13 to say that the fear of the Lord mm -hmm. is to hate evil, Amen. pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. And so just like it said, uh, you know, when we uh, have wisdom, we hate, we uh, depart from evil. So it did say that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Mm -hmm. uh, is to uh, hate pride and arrogancy mm -hmm. in the evil way, in the forward mm -hmm. mouth. And so uh, I find that that's the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. 
That's the beginning of wisdom, amen? We're talking about to have fear, amen? To have reverence, amen? To have respect, amen? To have love, amen? To be disciplined, amen? Glory to God and the things of God, amen? And not those worldly proverbs, amen? You know what I'm saying? Do what's in your heart, baby. No, I'm talking about being true to God and all. Don't play with words, amen? We see here to know wisdom, amen? Amen, and instruction. It says to perceive the words, amen. What words? Something said by God, amen. I want to reference Revelation, the first chapter, amen, in the 10th verse, and it says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And it says, and I heard uh, behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, a great voice of authority, amen. Amen. We need to listen to God, amen. We listen to everybody and everything except the Lord, amen. Glory to God. Can you hear the Lord speaking to you right now? Amen. Not my voice. I'm talking about the Lord's voice. Amen. Genesis, the second chapter in the 17th verse says, God. And we see here, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen. Because we're talking about words. Amen. To know wisdom and instruction, to receive the words. You need to perceive the words, what? Of God. I'm referencing Genesis 2 and 17, but of the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. We find out, see, those amen. are the words of God, amen. But we need to learn to what? Discern, amen, the difference between the words of God, amen, and the words of a devil. I'm going to help you out here. See, that was Genesis, the second chapter, the 17th verse. But when you move on to Genesis, the third chapter, in the 14th verse, here comes Satan. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Now I thought God just said, in the 17th chapter, thou shalt surely die. Then here come good old slick Rick talking about ye shall not surely die. See, we need to know and discern the difference between the devil and the Lord. First and foremost, God's never going to contradict himself. First and foremost, God's not a man that he should lie. Amen. Whatever it is, it's yea and amen. I love you, Lord. Glory to God. The difference between the words of God and the words of Satan. I heard a comment. Yes. I was also looking how important the word of God is. Because when Jesus was tempted in Matthew, the fourth chapter, um, and the Satan came to tempt Jesus to eat bread, you know, um, because he was hungry. And, Amen. And, but the point I'm making in that particular verse, Jesus told him, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, mm -hmm. but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. So, you know, God's word is very important. Amen. We can't live without it. Amen. It's greater than our necessary food. Amen. So what you're saying is we find out that God's word is more important than our feelings. Amen. A lot of times we live in our feelings. Amen. It's how we feel today. Amen. Say, I'm not uh, denying that you feel some kind of way. What I'm saying is you need more than a feeling. God is more than a feeling. Amen. A lot of us, you know, we categorize God. We equal God to a feeling. Amen. We equal God to a feeling, amen, on how we treat others, amen. We equal God to a feeling, amen, on how we praise him, amen. We equal God to a feeling. The God I serve is more than a feeling. We equal God to how the music makes me feel, amen. If I don't feel it, amen, that ain't God. God is more than a feeling, amen. Amen. Glory to amen, God. Amen, amen. We see here, amen, as we move on in the second verse, it says, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words. I'm talking about from God. He said, of understanding. What I'm saying is the things from God, they say that's where you get true understanding, amen. Go to Proverbs, the fourth chapter in the seventh verse. Proverbs, the fourth chapter in the seventh verse tells me wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get what? Wisdom. Uh-huh. And with all thy getting, get what? Understanding, amen. And all the wisdom that you get, get understanding, amen. We got to do more than just text proof. We got to do more than just rememorize the scripture. And all thy getting, amen. Get understanding, amen. 
Amen. That you may rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. We see Proverbs 3 and 5 says what? Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy what? Own understanding. Amen. Somebody say, I don't understand. You're right. Amen. I'm talking about godly wisdom. Amen. I'm talking about the words of God. Amen. I'm, I'm talking about the things that are above your own intellect. I'm talking about the things that are above your degree. I got a degree. I ain't knocking education. I'm talking about the God that I serve is above any degree that I have. Amen. I'm talking about being like Paul, being content at some point. Uh-huh. Whatever state I find myself in. Amen. Just be content with the Lord. Amen. Stop renaming yourself. Amen. God has given you a name. Amen. Be content with the name that God has given you. Amen. Your name is no longer Jacob, amen. Your name is Israel. Glory to God. Amen. We see here as we go into the third verse, it says to receive the, the instruction of wisdom, mm -hmm. justice, and judgment, and equity, amen. That instruction to receive discipline, to receive reproof, amen, from God, amen, that you may live what? Prudently, amen, amen. In equity, amen. No blue eyes and big U's and whatever we got going on. None of that. I'm talking about in equity. Uh huh. Upright. A right. good relationship, amen, with the Lord, amen, amen. And and judgment. See, the judgment of God, amen, is deliverance for the righteous. And it's fate for the wicked, amen. Heaven or hell, amen. I heard somebody say, which way do you want to go, amen. Psalms 25 and 9, it says, the meek will he guide in judgment. And the meek will he teach his way. John, the seventh chapter and the 24th verse says, judge not according to the appearance, but judge what? Righteous judgment, glory to God. Revelations 2 and 4 says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Amen. Same, you can start running around talking about don't judge me. Amen. Glory to God. I'm holding you. Amen. He's holding them. Amen. To what? A standard. Amen. Holding them. Amen. To wisdom. Amen. Walking in all righteousness. Amen. Glory to God. Not just when it feels good. Amen. God is more, amen, than a feeling, amen. Not just when, you know, uh, it benefits me. God is more than a feeling, amen. I'm talking about long-suffering, amen. I'm talking about patience. God is more than a feeling. Glory to God. Equity. We're talking about justice according to what? Natural law or what? Right? Specifically, we, we find out, I'm talking about according to the Lord who is righteous in all that he is, amen. Glory to God. We're going to move on, amen, to the fourth verse, amen. The fourth verse of this lesson, amen, is just as good as the rest, man. It says, to give what? Subtly and to the simple, to the young man, knowledge, and what? Discretion, amen. What does it mean by simple, amen? Mm. What does it mean? We say, let's, let's start with subtility first. We see here, we're talking about prudence, amen. To give what? With caution, wisdom, judgment, discretion, amen. To the simple refers to the person who is what? Naive. Those that were, are untaught, amen. Glory to God. Knowledge. I'm talking about wisdom. I'm talking about godly wisdom. We need to be giving those that are untaught godly wisdom, amen. We're around here promoting books and doing all these other things. We need to promote the Bible. All Glory right. to God. It's enough, amen. Give them godly wisdom, amen. Amen. We need more than, amen, than just food in our natural bellies, amen. We need the word of God, amen. Brother teacher. Amen. Can you, and I don't know if you have or not, maybe I missed it, but can you define the difference between common sense and wisdom? Because a lot of times I hear people say, you have to have common sense. You need to use common sense. So can you um, help me out with that, brother teacher? 
Amen. Common sense in the context that it might be being used, we see here. Common sense from an earthly standpoint, amen. We see common sense, amen, if, uh, if a child touches a hot plate or a child does something and it, it hurts them, amen, it's common sense. Most likely, they won't touch it again, amen. Most of us can relate to that, amen. We've done things in our lives, amen, and along the way, we have what we call natural um, sense. I'm talking about the sense that is just attained by, I think I've heard you say, Pastor, the natural man. But I'm talking about something that's beyond, amen, the natural man. I'm talking about godly wisdom, amen. As I mentioned earlier, man, I want to go back, and there's a lot of proverbs that we use, amen. Blood is thicker than water, amen. Don't throw the baby out with the bath water, amen. We see it takes a village to raise a child. Two wrongs don't make a... I'm talking about God. I'm talking about something that's based on the word of God. Something that proceeded out of the mouth of God, amen. Not just out of my limited experience. So as we continue on here, we see here in verse 7, amen. Verse 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Amen. What I would have just said is you a fool if you despise wisdom and instruction. Amen. Glory to God. You are a fool if you despise wisdom and instruction. I'm talking about instruction meaning discipline. If you despise chastisement, if you despise reproof, amen. If you despise, amen, being trained, amen, in the things of God, amen. Glory to God. The Old Testament we see here, when we see the word fear, amen. Fearing God. You see, it's an important quality we see here in the seventh verse. For what? His people. Amen. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about for his people. It is an important quality for all of us to have, amen. The fear of God. I'm talking about, granted, fear can be described, amen, um, as uh, terror, amen, or dread, amen. Uh huh. We can go to Genesis, the third chapter, in the tenth verse, amen. But fear in the Old Testament most often refers to what? Obedience and reverence to God, amen. Those who fear God exhibit trust uh -huh, and obedience, amen. You can reference that in Leviticus, the 25th chapter, and the 17th verse. To what? His commandments, the things that proceed out of his mouth. Amen. 2 Timothy, the first chapter and the 7th verse says, For God, what? Has not given us the spirit of fear. Amen. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Ain't that, what is the Holy Ghost to fear? What is God to fear? The one who's omnipotent. The one who's sovereign, amen? One who's omnipresent. What is it for my God to fear? I have the spirit of God in me, amen? I'm not sure we should ask ourselves when we reference that or use it in the wrong, what spirit are we talking about? I'm talking about the spirit of God. But the fear that we have for our God is our reverence for our God, amen? It should be a light, amen? It should be what I call a, a, a limiter from the left or to the right that I only can go so far. To the left. I only can go so far to the right. Glory to God. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Second Timothy. That was the first chapter in the seventh verse. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. But of power. God is powerful. Amen. The last time I checked, it says, and of love. The Bible said, God is love. Amen. And of a sound mind. Genesis, the third chapter, the tenth verse says, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. See here, is it dread? See, this didn't come from God. Uh-huh. See, he got this from somewhere else. Talking about it saying, and I was what? I was afraid. Why was Adam afraid? Why was he afraid? It says, because I was naked and I hid myself. See, when you start dibbling and dabbling and doing things outside of God, yes, you're afraid, amen. But when you stay, amen, in his capable arms, when you stay, amen, and continue to walk righteous in all that God is and not your own, you find out that, you know, there's nothing for you to be afraid of, amen. But we see here in Genesis, the third and tenth, third chapter and the tenth verse, we see here where... Dread 
overcame, amen, one, we see that other kind of fear, amen, because these are things that are outside, amen, of God. We see here that the fool is sure to be what? Near destruction, amen. You can read Proverbs 10 and 14. As a result, what? Of rebelling, uh-huh, I'm talking about refusing discipline, refusing instruction, rebelling against God, amen. Glory to God. Why do godly people do ungodly things? I'm asking the class a question. Why do godly people do ungodly things, amen? As we talk about the call of wisdom, amen, we define call, amen, we define wisdom, amen, and we're talking about the fear of, fear of the Lord, amen, is the beginning of wisdom. Well, brother teacher, I would go to what the same struggle that Paul had in Romans 8 mm -hmm. and 7 where Paul comes to an agreement where his state was at that particular time. It was no more him that did those things, but it was the sin that was still remaining and dwelling in him. Amen, amen. We find out that we see here godly people and sometimes people who are call themselves godly, we find out a lot of times they do ungodly things, amen. They operate outside of God, amen. We find out there's a lot of things we can start, we can look throughout the Bible. I would encourage you to read the entire Bible. Uh, you can just, you can look at Exodus, you can, it doesn't matter what chapter, you can see man rebelling against God, amen. You can start with Genesis and you can just move on. You can see the rebellion against God, amen. When we lose the fear, of God, amen. When we stop reverencing our Lord, amen, we find out that now that litmus test, amen, we've, it's a whole other litmus test. Instead of you asking the question, is what I'm saying right now, does it bring God glory? Are the things that I'm doing right now, do they bring God glory? Do my thoughts, do they bring God glory? Are the things that you're thinking right now, do they bring God glory? Oh, you're meddling now. Uh -huh. You're meddling now. Uh-huh. All the things that you're doing right now, do they bring God glory? Mm hmm And whatever it is that you said or saying, does it bring God glory? Mm hmm See, people do ungodly things when we get beside ourselves and we consider God as a feeling, amen? God is more, amen, than a feeling, amen? We should reverence God in all the things that we do, amen? Not just some of the things, amen. As we move on, amen, to the eighth verse, amen. It says, my son, hear the instruction, the correction, amen, of thy father and forsake not the law, the instruction of thy mother, amen. Culturally, instruction was often addressed as advice uh -huh, to a son, amen, from the father, amen. Can you see how God's giving us instruction, amen? Yeah, can you see how God has given his son and his daughter's instruction, amen? But we see here the reference on law in conjunction uh -huh, with the mother. Law, a rule of action, amen. The law of nature is the will of God as what? To human conduct, amen. Founded what on more difference of things, amen. You can, you can reference that in Romans, the first chapter, the 20th verse. I want to reference Acts, the 16th chapter, in the first verse, where we see here the law of the mother. We see here Acts, the 16th chapter, in the first verse, I want to take you to Timothy. Uh -huh. And we see here, we understand that the mother and the grandmother demonstrated what? God's influence, amen. Glory to God. In Timothy, amen. Acts the 16th chapter in the first verse says, Then came he to what? To Deborah and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple uh -huh, was there named what? Timotheus. The son of a certain woman who was what? A Jewish and believed, but his father what? Was a Greek. Amen. Hallelujah. We have influence, amen. It does not matter who you are. I'm talking about the law of God, amen. 
I'm not talking about your denomination, and I'm not talking about your denomination. I just used it in two different contexts. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the law of God. Glory to God. We can have what we call the most profound, most powerful influence there is, amen, if we'll just hold to the laws of God, amen. And I uh, agree with you, uh, brother teacher. And I was looking at uh, Second Timothy, the third chapter, where we talk about Timothy mm -hmm. and the extent of even a little further. Uh -huh. uh, Paul was speaking to him, showing him how important it was to keep the law, you know, the word, which is the word of God, God's law. And um, in the third chapter and in the uh, 14th verse, he said, but, but continue thou in the things which thou hast heard learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and from that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And so the importance was because it's the you know, God's word, God's law. Amen. It's able to make us wise Amen. if we obey it. We can know it, but that's not enough. It makes us wise when we obey it. When we obey when we, the word of God, yes, amen. It makes us wise. So that's why he said um, that it's able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. The obedience, amen, is better, amen, than a sacrifice. We see here many of us, amen, we were raised up in the church like myself, amen. I say all the time, I say when I was a kid, I believe I was in church Monday night, Wednesday night, Friday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night. I was in church all the time. I thank God, amen, for my parents, amen, taking me to church, amen. But we find out it's not just enough, amen, to go to church, amen. It's not just enough for you to show up, amen. At some point, amen, I heard Paul say, I have learned at some point, amen, we have to be obedient, amen. At some point, we have to choose, amen, uh, or not choose, amen, the calling. I'm talking about the invitation, amen, to receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, amen. We have to choose, amen, the name that God has given us, amen, over every other name. And we have to choose to be obedient, amen, to the statutes of God, amen, and stop picking up all this other stuff, amen, that we pick up along the way, amen. Amen. We got to put the old man in his place, amen. Some of us need to give the old man an eviction, amen. Some of y'all wonder why you're still cussing, amen, every time you get upset, amen. All right. Glory to God. You need to put the old man and give him an, an eviction, amen. It's not just enough, amen, to show up. That's the right thing to do, but we want to live righteous, amen. About cursing and, you know, we got to put that away. Amen. Because, you know, that wisdom, it don't come from God. You amen. Know? When I was looking at James, the third chapter, it tells us in the 14th verse, it said, But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Like, um, you wonder, little children, you hear them cursing. you like, where they get that from? Mm -hmm. We know that that wisdom didn't come from God. Amen, <laughs> you know? amen, amen. There's some devilish teaching there, you know. And they say, but the wisdom that is from God is from above. It is pure and peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's the wisdom of God. We're going to live the word of God. And we're going to show forth, you know, the light of Christ in us. Amen. Glory to God. As you gave the illustration, many of us can relate to our own children. Amen. And you hear your child say something, amen, that you did not teach them. Amen. Glory to God. We see that that didn't come from in the house. That came from an influence, amen, outside of the house, amen. We, then you start monitoring and you're looking to see, amen, who are their friends, amen. And you tell, you know, right, little, little Rick, I don't want you to hang out with little Johnny. You know what I'm saying? Little Susie, I don't want you to hang out with uh, Mary, amen, because they're a bad influence, amen, on your life, amen. Glory to God. Hey, don't watch that show, amen, or whatever the case may be, because we see that those words, and they'll start picking those things up, amen. As saints of God, we have to be mindful, amen, of what we allow to come in our ear gate, amen. We have to be mindful of what we allow to come in our eye gates, amen. Teach it, we have teach to it. Be mindful 
mindful, amen, because these things could very much have an influence, amen, on us, amen. And some people say, oh, it don't matter, amen, oh, that, that ain't going to bother me, but I'm going to ask you the question, well, why is it every time you go to a movie, amen, and you watch a tearjerker, you just start crying, amen, off of something that you watching, amen. It has an impact on you, amen. We have to be mindful, amen, of what we allow, amen, to come inside of this vessel, amen, that God has cleaned up, amen. Teach it, teach it. <laughs> amen, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Hallelujah. My son, Listen, yeah, you tell your children that when you go out, just because they do it, I don't care what they do or whatever, they don't do that in this house. Y'all, a lot, of, a lot of us done said that before. It don't matter what they do over there. So we need to we stop worrying about what's happening in everybody else's house. Worry about what's happening in your house, glory to God. Saying if someone else comes and entices thee, he says, consent not. Literally, if somebody opens the way, we see entice to something that's not of God, amen. Don't yield to sin, amen. Just because they present it, amen. Eve, just because you got Slick Rick talking to you over on the corner, don't yield, amen, to the Brother sin, teacher. amen. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah, Brother Teacher, you know, and I thank you for doing that because uh, when I uh, left home and I joined the military, Mm -hmm. My mother made me promise her, you know, I never promised my mother something I didn't do. Amen. So my mother made me promise her that I would read Proverbs. And uh, so I did. I was in basic training and I read Proverbs, uh -huh. you know. And so, like you said, as sinners entice thee, consent thy not. Because after I graduated from basic training, I got here to Fort Gordon mm -hmm. and, uh, in AIT. Mm -hmm. And me and my friends, my friends and I, uh, we were downtown on Broad Street, you know, uh -huh. enjoying our, our weekend off, you know, and everything when some prostitutes pulled up in the van, mm -hmm. opened the side door, and uh, I won't say what, what, what my eyes beheld, mm -hmm. but opened the side door, enticed me, uh -huh. you know, and uh, had my mama not made me read, or had my mama not made me promise her I would read Proverbs, <laughs> I probably went with them. You know, but in Proverbs, the seventh chapter, it talks about that street girl, mm -hmm. you know, Amen. and in the 27th Amen. verse, it talks about how her house is the way to hell going down to the chambers of death, you know. And so I thank God to the day that I made that promise. I felt like my mom messed my life up, though. I really did because there was things I wanted to do when I left home. And uh, that's why I left home. I wanted to be free at last. But thank God my mom made me promise her that I would read Proverbs. And that seven chapters what saved me and kept me from getting in that van, you know. So like you're teaching, if sin is enticed thee, consent thou not. Amen. And, 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 when, and, and so my response was when they enticed me, and I, I wouldn't say it at the time. Uh -huh. And uh, there was one brother that was with us. I won't mention his name. He may be still out there. Now he was saved. He he professed to be a Christian, mm -hmm. and, but when they enticed me, only I, only thing I could hear was Proverbs seven, mm -hmm. and that last verse, verse twenty seven. Her house is the way to hell, and my response was, "No, nah, I don't want to go to hell like that." Amen. And my friend that was with me looked at me like, "When you get saved, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> I might was a sinner, but that one word is what kept me." Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And we need to. Make a promise to God, amen, that we will hold to his statutes, amen, that we will do what it is that he asked us to do, glory to God, amen, contrary, amen, to, amen, those that hey, may come to us, amen, and, um, and say, let us lay a weight for blood, amen. We see here the illustration, amen, of a murderer or robber, amen. We see in the context of pastor making, we see the promise to his mother, amen, somebody trying to entice him to get in the van and let's go, amen. Where they say, let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause, amen. Expressing, we see an effort or hope uh -huh, uh, to conceal something, amen. We see here, even if... Um, 
no one else can see it, amen. Even if you think that uh, you're doing it, amen, and nobody else knows, I'm talking about God knows, amen. We have to show ourselves approved to God. We have to know that God sees everything, amen. We have to, at all times, amen, show fear. I'm talking about respect, admiration, amen, to our Lord, amen. I want to add that uh, when we talk about mm -hmm. the enticing and consent, notice that um, the evildoers, they had an invitation. Mm -hmm. Each time they said, let us, let us. You know how some, uh, we, when we was in our sins, our friends come and say, let us, because they want company mm -hmm. and doing their wrong stuff. Uh -huh. And so I remember uh, the song that we used to sing and say, oh, be careful little eyes what you see and oh, be careful little ears what you hear. And it didn't say, for the Father up above is looking, you know, down. Uh -huh. you know, oh, be careful little eyes and ears what you uh, do. So, and also that's another one that, uh, we used to sing that reminds us that kept uh -huh. us uh, reminded to not fall into uh, temptation. It tells us to yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Mm -hmm. And it say, ask the Savior to help you, for He will carry you through. So you know these things reminded us, you know, to not yield to temptation, to keep our eyes open, to <laughs> like you talked about that discernment. Uh -huh. Discern evil when it's present. Amen, amen. <laughs> so I just thank God for what you teaching right now. Amen, I, I, and I love that. That was a good, wonderful comment there, and it kind of it took me somewhere here when I say let us, and when you make the comment that says an, it's an invitation. Amen. When someone they say let us, amen. They say let us lay a wait for blood. Tell them I already. Uh, accepted another invitation. I'm good. Amen. I look. He, he said, "You just, you know, to give him Romans 10 and 9. Just speak the word to him." I received a different invitation. Amen. Uh, I don't want yours. Amen. Come, let us. Amen. You see how bold the devil is? He said, "Let us." Amen. That was a. This. He, he said he's trying to claim his house back. Some of y'all have given Satan an eviction. Amen. And he's coming back to you. I'm talking about those old friends. Amen. That they just pop up and call you just out of the clear blue sky, trying to give you what an invitation. I'm talking about. They come around. You know what I'm talking about. You go around. They don't only talk about old things. Amen. They won't talk about nothing new. I know what I did yesterday. Amen. We don't need to talk about yesterday. Let's talk about right now. Amen. Do you love the Lord right now? Amen. I can't worry about yesterday. I can't go undo yesterday. Amen. I can only live for God right now. Amen. Just let them know I've already received, amen, an invitation from the Lord and I've accepted that invitation. Amen. I've been renamed. Amen. Glory to God. Also, you brought to mind that a lot of time when we deal with church, you know, people, they look at what Sally doing over there, and they say, if Sally doing it, then I, I guess I can do it. You know, Amen. a lot of people, uh, sometimes when you, you look in that area or realm of why people do some things and they know it's wrong, because they looking at the let us, you know, or uh -huh. you, uh, either uh, I'm doing this, you know, come on, do it with me. You know, sometimes people like, um, you know, sin has an invitation to uh -huh. it, and that is through temptation, tempting us to do what is wrong. And we have to be careful and be aware and alert of the, of the enemy because he, he seek a, uh, and he's like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's seeking. So he's going to ask you, let us, let us. Come on, let's do this thing. Mm -hmm. He want to make you feel included, amen. Well, I don't get what I'm sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I am excluded, amen, from your mess, amen. I've been separated, set apart, amen. We have to realize that there's no more let us, amen, once you receive, amen, that invitation, amen. We find out here, you know, a lot of times people, they always, you know, saying, well, everybody else is doing it. What does that have to do with the Lord, amen. It ain't about what everybody else is doing, amen. What, is, what does the Lord have for you to do? Amen. What is the Lord calling you to do, amen? You hear a lot of time folks are justified things even in the body. Well, they're doing it in the corporate. Don't compare, you know what I'm saying, the house of God hey, to the corporate America, amen. Glory to God. There are some things and some things that we can take and we can use, but don't compare it, amen, the things of God to the things of the world. Amen. Verse 20, amen. We're going to go to verse 20. We're going to close out with 20 and 21. It says, Wisdom crieth out, crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets, amen. 
She crieth in the chief place uh -huh, of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city, she uttereth her words, saying, we see wisdom, God's chosen proclaiming, and we see the word of God. I mean, in the streets, I'm talking about in the public, amen. I know you're going your prayer class. I'm talking about proclaiming the word of God. I'm talking about on your job, amen. I'm talking about proclaiming the word of God in the grocery store. I'm talking about proclaiming the word of God just in your character, amen. How you example, amen. How you live your life, amen. When you live a life, amen, of wisdom, amen, you are proclaiming, amen, the word of God. When you live your life according, amen, to the words of God, I mean, the instruction that God has given us, amen, we find out that we're living, amen, uh, an example, amen, that anyone can take away from. We see here Luke, the 14th uh, chapter, mm -hmm, and 14 and 20, he said, and the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, that my house, what, may be filled, glory to God. This is an outstanding lesson here. We're talking about the call to wisdom, amen. I started out, amen, and we talked a little bit about the call for a reason, amen, because I wanted to highlight, amen, the invitation, amen, that God has given, I mean, uh, everyone, amen. It does not matter Jew or Gentile, amen, the invitation, amen, the invitation, amen, to salvation, amen, to the invitation to everlasting life, amen, through his son, amen. Jesus Christ, amen. I wanted to highlight when I look at the call, I'm talking about the being renamed, amen. Uh, when I reference Jacob, amen, I wanted to highlight that, that old name that you, that old man that you uh, still somewhat resides, I'm talking about in you, God's giving you a new name, amen. And I'm encouraging you as you have been summoned, I'm talking about to walk in all righteousness, amen, to walk according to the name that God has given you, amen. Walk in the context of righteousness, amen. Continue to love one another. Be encouraged, amen, in godly wisdom, amen, and not worldly wisdom. Where some of those things, they might resemble the word, amen. It is not the word, amen. Stay with the word of God, amen. Don't take away from the word of God, amen. Be able to discern, amen, have some wisdom to know that, amen, that uh, if you doodle around with worldly wisdom, amen, you can find yourself, amen, like Eve, in the Garden of Eden, amen, where it is that you got Satan, amen, on one hand, you got God on the other, amen, where it is that God says, amen, thou shalt surely die, amen, in the second chapter, in the 17th verse, you find Satan right in the third chapter, in the fourth verse, ye shall not surely die, amen. Have some discernment, man, have some wisdom, amen, get some word, amen, in your belly, amen, just spend some time with the Lord. Be encouraged this week, amen, we love you here, we hope that you enjoy it. This Sunday school lesson, amen. You can visit us, amen, on, on our website, amen, at beholyministries.org, amen. You can give there, amen, glory to God. Uh, you can visit us, amen, on Facebook, amen, and YouTube, amen. Our next service, amen, starts, amen, in about 22 minutes. We start at 1130. God bless you. We love you. And until next Sunday, amen, please remember our motto. And it says what? A child saved is a soul saved. Bless the life. God bless you, and we love you. Thank you for attending this awesome service. The women of Be Ye Holy Ministries are hosting our Breaking Free Revival, featuring Evangelist Frazier of Topeka, Kansas. From 24 June to 26 June, at 7.30 p.m. nightly, culminating on 28 June at 11.30 a.m. Please join us via Facebook or YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and select the bell symbol so you'll be notified when we go live. Again, on behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, thank you for attending Come fellowship with us again, and may God bless you.